Good evening, and welcome to Newcastle After Dark. We are your hosts, The Management. Coming to you from the land of the Villanova and the Kitchen Corner, bringing you films that are a feast for the mind. Tonight's film is a truly rare and forgotten gem of a film. 1990's Mr. Frost, starring Jeff Goldblum. This has Kathy Baker, Jean-Pierre Cassel, and Alan Bates. And this is a supernatural thriller that really will get you thinking. Yeah. And it is extraordinary. Yeah. Um, It's rare. It's hard to find. Um, It's not streaming anywhere. This is correct. Yeah. And, you know, this originally was one of the first episodes we had shown on Newcastle After Dark. And unfortunately, it's been removed for quite some time. Almost seven years. Yeah. But thankfully, we're able to show it to you once again. Yes. And this is one of our favorite films. We caught this in the early 90s when it came out. Yeah. And we think you will enjoy this one. Definitely. So sit back, relax, and enjoy 1990s Mr. Frost. You sure there's no one home? Of course there is. Having a policeman's ball, aren't they? They're just dying for us to turn up. Asshole. Come on. What the hell is this thing? Shut up and look over there. Jesus. 
So what did I tell you? <laughs> What's that smell? It smells like rats. Nah, it's just you, you ugly bastard. Asshole. Hey, not even locked. Come on over, Inspector. Do you want a cup of coffee? Thank you. How did you know I was a police inspector? Tonight? Yes. But I didn't think it was quite as obvious as that. No, 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 it's not. I'm just, uh, I'm just kind of a seer. Doesn't it surprise you to have a police officer on your premises? You know, it's like very little surprises me. Oh. Could you keep your eye on this coffee for a second while I finish up one, one thing? So you're not in the slightest way curious about what I'm doing here? Totally curious, but let's... Hold those horses baked Alaska. Warm, fluffy meringue over vanilla ice cream on a brandy soaked Genoise. One little dish? Um, frankly, not at this time of day. Thank you. Okay. small appetite and the number of my friends is uh, even smaller oh. now coffee and uh, good conversation my visit is not official mm -hmm. you can always throw me out no <laughs> inspector uh... sorry I didn't I didn't get your name Detweiler criminal investigation I'm thrilled you're here, Mr. Detweiler. Really, really, I, I, uh, I love it when people just drop by. But uh, what's what's going on? Well, it's rather difficult to say, really. Anyway, um, we arrested two car thieves three days ago, and they told us an outlandish story. 
You do own an Aston Martin, don't you? Yes, yes. Oh, she's a beauty who spends most of her time in the garage, I'm afraid. I, I never seem to find time to take that driver's test. Yes. <laughs> well, these two men. They tried to break into your garage a week ago to steal your Aston Martin. And they, well, they decided against it. Didn't like the model? They said they found a body inside. Oh, yeah, the body. Yeah, I was uh, just finishing burying it when you showed up. That's just the sort of answer I was expecting. What do you mean? What do you think, I'm kidding? If you're not, then we don't have the same sense of humor. And if I were to ask you to dig it up again, Oh, well, then, then I would suggest that you come back tomorrow. I've just got a whole lot to do today. I'll be back tomorrow with a warrant. Yes, that would seem to be the proper thing. children. What a shocking spectacle of appalling carnage. The Home Secretary watched while police officers dug up close to a dozen mutilated bodies. Never has Britain witnessed a crime of this magnitude. By the sheer horror of his acts, Mr. Frost, the alleged murderer, reminds one of the notorious American chainsaw murderers, Ed Gein and Edmund Emil Kemper. At this time, little is known about the background of the accused. Yes, he told us there were 24. We have to check to make sure there were no more. Okay. I'll call you back. I told you that I like trophies. Congratulations, Dr. Day. But may I remind you that that Victoria smile of yours is totally inappropriate? I know, I just couldn't help it. Hi, Phil. Hi, Doctor. Did you see? You're on page one this morning. I am. Well, not you. Your hospital. Oh, you got my hopes up. Hey, I save it for you.
Hello, Simon. Have you been up long? Of course. I heard you up there. Overhead, tossing like a wild animal, all night long. All night long. I'm sorry, Simon. Simon. I need the van this morning. Hmm. If passing yourself off as a madman is your idea of a good time. What are you talking about? Not only do I know you as if you were my own son, but I also read the newspapers. That's my problem. I worry about you. I know you do. I appreciate it. Try and bring it back in one piece. And remember, the brake is on the left and the accelerator's on the right. Thank you, Simon. Go to hell. Thank you, Simon. And what are you looking at? Well, good morning, Doctor. How are you today? <laughs> I feel all right. I had that dream again last night. Oh, did you see his face this time? Yeah. It wasn't my father. I don't know who it was. We'll have to talk about this later. <laughs> but you better wait for me in your room. There's a lot going on today. Is anything wrong? Oh, no. <laughs> How could there be with a guardian angel like you around? Hmm? <laughs> Posing the yearbook picture, don't you? Professor Reinhardt, Inspector Corelli. I'm happy to turn the patient over to you personally. Welcome to St. Clair, Mr. Frost. I hope you'll enjoy your stay here. Perhaps the handcuffs are no longer absolutely necessary, Inspector. It's your responsibility now, Professor.
All right, Joseph. Please take Mr. Frost to his room. In two years, no one has been able to turn up the slightest clue regarding Frost's identity. Interpol is going to close the dossier. No one knows either his first name or his nationality. There is no official trace of him anywhere. For all intents and purposes, the man simply does not exist. It hasn't stopped him from killing 24 people. He was moved from England to Germany and then to Switzerland before coming here, and in two years he hasn't uttered a single word? Right. Not one syllable. I suppose you all know that the world record, if I may call it that, is less than a year. So tell him about it. Would you care to describe your feelings about Mr. Frost, Inspector? I've taken a look at this thing that was handed out to everyone. It's nicely written, beautifully bound, and reads easily. I'm only sorry that they didn't throw in a picture or two. As for me, Professor, I've seen the victim's photos. The youngest was 10 years old. So, if you really want to know my feeling, I think this son of a bitch should have his ass roasted rather than vacationing here in this charming platinum funny farm. Oh, I see. So you look back with a certain nostalgia to those times of more radical methods. Is that it? No. As a rule, I don't. I specifically wanted to introduce my staff. Doctors Day, Larcher, Elias, Hollander, and Zasubowski. I shall be looking after you myself, but they will be assisting me in turn. If the slightest problem should arise, please do not hesitate to inform me. Dr. Day, would you kindly inform this individual that his welcoming speech is quite simply boring me to death? Finally spoken. For your first day here, I must say, this is an auspicious start. Dr. Day, please make it clear to this tedious lot that it's going to be totally useless addressing me in that saccharine tone of voice. If I choose to speak, it's going to be with you and you alone. I hope that's clear. Now, uh, excuse me, I'm going to go back to my room. Uh, my trip has been exhausting. Joseph, please return him to his room. What do you think got into him? He spoke in less than an hour. We have succeeded where two years of analysis and pentathol have failed. He spoke to us. No, he spoke to me. Sarah, you are the only female member on our staff. That, no doubt, explained his reaction. Of course, if he persists in this fixation, it is entirely possible that I should be obliged to work through you. 
during the initial weeks. Professor, I wasn't trained to be a puppet. Dr. Day, Mr. Frost has left five of Europe's most eminent psychiatrists utterly baffled. It is my intention to succeed where they have failed. But I merely feel that since he chose to speak to Dr. me... Dr. Day. Then... The incident is closed. Professor, I oh, don't appreciate you speaking to Sarah, me. Sarah, come on. I'll walk you back. Thank you, gentlemen. The doctor says she needs no repairs. Well, the doctor's not do they know. And perhaps the shower could take over. So? So. Okay. Professor Reinhardt? Yes? What can I do for you? My name is Felix Detweiler. I arrested Mr. Frost two years ago. Indeed, I recall hearing about you. And all I want is 15 minutes of your time. I must talk to you about Frost, please. Listen, I haven't a moment to spare right now, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, you're no longer a member of the police force. So I scarcely see what... Uh... Frost is not just another patient, Professor. He is the devil himself. I'm fully aware of your obsession, Mr. Detweiler. In fact, Mr. Frost's file contains a complete account of the harassment to which you subjected my Swiss and German colleagues. It's out of the question that anything of that sort should happen here. Frank, kindly escort this gentleman outside. I'm very late. We'll get in touch with you if necessary. The day you do, it will be too late. Look, just give us a break, all right? Please, please. kept you waiting, but there was a small problem with another patient. All right. Well, I'm Dr. Day, but I think you know that already. I must admit I haven't had time to go over your dossier, so today's session will just be a first meeting. You can go now, Joseph. We were all delighted to hear your voice yesterday. I must admit I was flattered that you chose me to speak to, but um, I think it's in your best interest to talk with Professor Reinhardt because he is so vitally concerned with your case. Don't tell me you've lost your power of speech again, Mr. Frost. Mr. Frost, it didn't take a genius to figure out what was behind that mirror, so you can spare me that victorious smile of yours. It's totally inappropriate. I just couldn't help it. <laughs> you know what I'd really enjoy? Using the kitchen from time to time. That's the thing I miss the most, being away from my pots and pans. 
Well, we'll see. It depends on what progress you and I make together. Obviously. Why did you pick me, Mr. Frost? You're young, strong. You believe neither in God nor in me. You're an integral part of your century, and you've got that scientific mind. I need that confrontation, Sarah, even if there is only one possible outcome. Oh. Mommy. That's sweet. Cheap. I like it very much. You deserve better. Bravo! You're gonna be a smash at our little Christmas party. There are times when I know you get sick of my problems. Oh, now don't say that, Christopher. You know how much I care about you. There are a lot of people who care about you. Soon you'll be going home and your father will be waiting for you. I still need time. Just a little. I feel them out there. Those people with their hate. It's no good telling myself it's real life out there. Out there I'd be all alone. You wouldn't be with me. Yes, I would. I will always be with you whenever you need me. somewhere together have dinner maybe I'm sorry you're out of luck I already have a date oh no problem look look uh, it's my brother's birthday I'm taking him out to that great new Japanese restaurant you come uh, with us no. yeah come on come on it's my treat come on thank you Sarah okay Frank <laughs> mr. Frost now come on sis what's he like oh you know the usual he's got um, Two sharp fangs, bloodshot eyes, six-inch long fingernails. And he roars from time to time, usually when he wants raw meat. I'll bet you haven't even seen him. Oh, she's seen him. She's the only one he's spoken to. Did he explain why? No, just that he chose me. Talk about an honor. You know, the reason that I went into psychiatry in the first place was for a case like this. For he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow, he's a jolly good fellow. and so say all of us, and so say all of us, and so say all of us, for he's a jolly good Mr. Frost. Here at St. Clair, the, the psychos just sit. 
We avoid that kind of expression here, Mr. Frost. We refer to the people who come to us as uh, patients, or in more extreme cases, as mentally ill. Which one am I? Which one? I hope, I hope. 24 corpses buried under your lawn, including seven children, all of them tortured to death. I'd find it hard to imagine a more extreme case. It's not hard. It's impossible. I am the extreme case. I'm darkness. I'm a prince. Uh... Oh, well, in that case, you'll be at home here. Dr. Elias has a patient who goes by the name of Lucifer, and then, of course, there's dear old Henry who prefers to be called Mephistopheles. Mm -hmm. It's hardly the same thing, Sarah. Those people are crazy. I would appreciate it if you'd stop calling me Sarah. How do you explain the complete lack of data on you? No date of birth, no place of birth, family, nationality unknown? If you're a product of spontaneous generation, believe me, you're unique. No, you're forgetting Floyd's Perlmutter. You'll find all the details in volume five of Psychotherapy and Analysis, uh, starting on page 684, line 15. Not gonna check? No, those, those party games don't mean much to me. Um, Mr. Frost, do you remember the policeman who arrested you in Brighton? Policeman, remember, I am memory. A man named, um, uh, Rottweiler. Detweiler. Right. This man seems terribly attached to you. He's followed you everywhere in the past two years from one country to another. Religious fanatic. Maybe, maybe he knows something about you. Hmm? All fanatics know things about me. They have a greater fear of me than love of their God. You know, that's the second time you've mentioned yourself and God in the same sentence. So, in fact, who are you? I'm the Gaga man. Boo. Is the real answer so unbelievable, Mr. Frost? Ask him. Ask that uh, Rottweiler. He believes it. in on you like this. I'm looking for a Mr. Detweiler. Lucky man. I'm Dr. Sarah Day. What do you want from him? Well, I saw him the other day at St. Clair Hospital. I just wanted to ask him a few questions. Ah. You're one of those psychiatrists. Perfect. That way you can stick any stupid label on his forehead. Paranoia, manic depressive. Look, uh, I'm just trying to help one of my patients. Do you want to tell me where I can find Mr. Detweiler? Or maybe ask me into your nice warm house so I can wait for him? My house is not warm. Anyway, I have a lot of work to do. Joker, you're a better host than your master. Do you know that? Yes. The Joker's an idiot. Well, come on in. <clears throat> well, Mr. Frost, I just came by to see if you were comfortable and all your needs were being looked after. <clears throat> and uh, since I have a few moments to spare, I thought we might get better acquainted. I felt we should have a little chat about the kind of work we do here at St. Clair. Perhaps you've become aware that I employ a method based on collective effort. And uh, that it would be very difficult for any one psychiatrist to devote himself exclusively to... to you. I'm Dr. Day, Sarah Day. I'm terribly sorry about what happened. Yeah. They didn't want to listen to me. 
Why have you tracked me down? I do want to listen to you. I'm quite anxious to hear what you wanted to tell Professor Reinhardt. Are you surprised to find me in a church? No, you must have a firm belief in God. Yes, I do have a firm belief in God. And I believe in the devil. Frost is not mentally ill, Dr. Day. He has no place in your hospital. You have taken evil under your roof. What do you mean by evil? Evil. Well, what do you mean? Do you mean the devil? Do you mean the Antichrist, Satan? What do you mean? Why have you come here? We clearly have nothing to say to each other. Mr. Detweiler. The man I'm confronted with has been examined and re-examined by the world's foremost psychiatrists who've come up with exactly nothing. Apparently, I'm the only one Mr. Frost has chosen to speak to. He spoke to you? Yes, he spoke to me. He spoke about God. He spoke about religious fanatics. He spoke about pots and pans, or cuisine, about choosing me to speak to. And that's why I must learn everything I can. She was my wife and Simon's daughter. I'll tell you a story that may help you to understand. I was the last person to hear Frost's voice until you did. It was in an English prison. Three months after he'd been arrested, he was waiting to be tried. He asked to see me.
Well, say, did you ever, uh, you didn't ever get a chance to take a look at that, uh, that home video of my movie. Oh, oh boy. Critique, any notes? Uh, you disgust me. Oh, you're too kind. That's, you don't have to say that. Mad. Mad, mad, mad. Mad. Oh, oh, I wanted to talk to you about Carol. You left her at home all alone that night. And those kids got in the house and... Uh, so senseless, but with you at the corner pub. You know what your wife's last thought on this earth was, Felix? She hated you for not being there to save her life. And I, I tell you that because sometimes I feel that guilt is character building. I just do. Oh. He knew. That's all I can tell you. He knew. He had the power to crush me completely. What did he mean by little home movies? Let's go. I shouldn't have a copy of this. And I certainly shouldn't be giving it to you. Why? What is it? Frost filmed his victims while he was torturing them. I couldn't bear to look at this ghastly thing for more than a few brief moments, but I kept it so that I would never forget, so that I would never weaken. Why do you think Frost spoke to me? If the Lord moves in mysterious ways, then the devil moves in mysterious ways as well. You don't accept that. No, I don't. Sarah, excuse me, Sarah, can you come, please? Has anyone told you about Christopher? No, what happened? 
When they looked in his room this morning, he wasn't there. He vanished. Oh. No, take it easy. His father called 15 minutes ago. Christopher simply went home. Where is my son? Downstairs. Christopher? You know perfectly well that I forbid anyone to come in here in my absence. I'd like you to put that rifle back where you found it. It's not a toy. But you always wanted me to take an interest in your guns. Those beautiful guns you clean with such love. Don't point it like that. One never knows. One does know, Father. And as I remember all you taught me, the bolt, the clip. Put it down, Christopher. Come on. I even remember how to load it. Look. Say that you are who you say you are. Now, what would the devil be doing here? I wanted to set some things right. You took a few years and undid centuries of effort. It used to be simple, good on one hand, evil on the other. There was a struggle. We had a game, and yes, we made it up. But then you came along, the scientists, the geniuses. You know, you couldn't care less about the human spirit. You're in your heads. You're half-hearted. You believe in nothing. There was a time when people sold their souls to me for youth or wealth. Well, these days I know you think you don't need Mr. Frost, but where's your enthusiasm? There's no passion, there's no life. So what do you want from us? What do you want from me? Well, really, doctor, if you could only help me to stop wetting the bed, I, uh, it's a horrible problem. I'm so ashamed. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Listen, I want, I must reveal to the world your impotence in the presence of the age-old power of the wild side. This is all very general, Mr. Frost. No, 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 it's very specific, Dr. Day. Tell me, in your opinion, what would be that, uh, what's the worst thing that a psychiatrist in the second millennium could do to one of her patients? What would be that one irreparable act the very negation of an entire era of progress. What would that be? Hmm. Murder, Sarah Day, murder. Murder. You want me to murder you? I think we've made great progress today. I'm prescribing a light sedative. You're trying to make me really display myself. Let go of my wrist, Mr. Frost.
Joseph! Oh, by the way, uh, you don't have any new news about that uh, nice young fellow. What's his name, Christopher? No. No. Oh. We're sure gonna miss him around here. Welcome back. Well, here we have the beginnings of our film, and you may notice the great Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, uh, who almost needs no introduction. That's correct. Yeah. Um, he was in the remake of Invasion of the Body Snatchers. He was in the remake of The Fly. Yeah, he was in uh, the Jurassic Park movies. He was in Death Wish. Yeah. Um, he's been in a ton of great movies. Yes. Uh, we're definitely big Jeff Goldblum fans. Absolutely. Yeah. Also, you have the fantastic Kathy Baker. Yeah, she's probably best remembered for being the promiscuous neighbor in Edward Scissorhands. Yes. She was on the television show Picket Fences. Um, she was in the Jesse Stone movies, which had Tom Selleck. They were those detective movies. Yes, you know. yes. And she was also in 1987's Street Smart with Morgan Freeman, which, you know, she is an accomplished actress. Absolutely, yeah. Now, you also have here, playing Detweiler, Alan Bates. Yeah, um, he's had a long and wonderful career. Yes. Um, he was in The Rose uh, from the 70s. He was also in The Shout, which is another great movie. Yes. Uh, playing the inspector, you have Jean-Pierre Cassel, who got his start from Gene Kelly. Gene Kelly saw him dancing and offered him a role in one of his films. And he went on to have an illustrious career in French cinema. And he was also in... The Three Musketeers. Mm -hmm. And this film was directed by Philippe Setbon. Uh, yeah, uh, he mostly did French television and movies. Yes. Mm -hmm. The music is um, Steve Levine. Now, he did some interesting projects. Yes, he did. Um, he was the musical director um, for the video, Do You Really Want to Hurt Me by Culture Club. Wow. He was also the musical director uh, for the song, um, Every Time You Go Away. Yes. Not the Paul Young version. Right. The version that's in the movie, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, with John Candy and Steve Martin. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, we have a great cast, a very interesting story, wonderful cinematography. Yeah. And you just wonder where it's going to. Yep. Now... We will get to our thoughts on it here in a moment, but you know, when he turns the costume jewelry into gold, I'd have been back the next day with a big old bag of costume jewelry, been like, you know, I need a little more convincing. I'm starting to believe, I'm starting to feel it. A few more of those miracles are gonna help yeah. me to be a true believer. Yeah, just this uh, bag will help me along the way, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah. But I think we're off to a good start. Yeah, we are. So let's get back to Mr. Frost. Sarah, you are fully aware of the risks involved in this kind of confrontation. On the basis of what you've told me, Mr. Frost is a dangerous paranoid. And you're also aware that a paranoid's first aim is not to be cured, but to destroy his doctor. Under normal circumstances, I would not have given you a case like this. It's not your field. Well, these are hardly normal circumstances, Professor. The video you saw affected you a great deal. It should only have been a source of information. I'm sorry, I'm not a computer. I hate to belabor the point, Sarah, but I'm warning you. Should you enter the realm of this man's delusions, even for only a moment, you are signing your own death warrant, both as a practicing physician and as a sane human being. I know. I know. Hello? Yes, Louise. Fine, she'll be right down. I'm afraid I've got bad news. Is it Christopher? Something happened to Christopher? No, no, not to him. Three hours ago, we killed his father. Right now, he's out there somewhere with a hunting rifle. No, it's not Christopher. It can't be Christopher. That's impossible. I'm terribly sorry. Uh, 
I remember, out there, it was long ago. I only could see the mud in the stinking city. My mother gave me a goldfish in a plastic bag. He was nice. He swam around in the bag. And the people rushed by. Hate printed on their faces like on the walls. The bag burst. Nobody stopped. It's never quiet. Why don't they stop? I was all wet, and my mother started to cry. There is not enough water for my fish. The ocean's all right. Music too, waves, but not for long. The fish is dying, but she's not my mother. He's dead. I never had a mother, and my father never took me anywhere. Never. All dead. Christopher was about to leave the hospital. I see. Well, um, what can I do for you? Has the boy... Has the boy had any contact with uh, Foster? No. Sarah, get down to the switchboard right away. There's a problem with your brother. Louise is trying to calm him down. I thought we made it clear that you are not needed around here, Mr. Detweiler. That may not be everyone's opinion, Mr. What's going on? Sir, I'm going out of my head. You understand me? Straight out of my head. Roland, Roland, calm down. Calm down. I'll be there soon. Wait for me. I'll be there in 20 minutes. Oh! Wait! Here, your things are oh. on the table. I'll drive. Thank you. Don't say a word. Look. Look at me. Sarah, wait. Let him be. Feeling in my legs. I can walk, Sarah. I can walk. Now, do you hear me? You see? Right there. You can hardly see any trace of the injury. It's simply incredible. Unbelievable. When you say unbelievable, does that mean impossible? Oh, it is possible. Here's proof. Rowan was never supposed to walk again. You said that yourself. Mm-hmm. This kind of remission occurs in one out of, I don't know, maybe one million cases. And as you know, medicine is not an exact science. Well, let's say that for once, I'm delighted to have been wrong.
and call a taxi? Oh, no. No, I'll be all right. Well, come on up and have a drink at least. Not really thirsty. Do you know you call me Sarah today? At least twice? Oh, well. It must have just slipped out. Are you sure you're not thirsty? I can't remember when I was last sure of anything. Well, look. I don't feel like being alone tonight, and... I could use a shoulder. Yours would do very nicely. Say, I, I wouldn't want you to think that I'm not attracted to you. But I... I know, I know. It's not on a first date, right? It's more complicated than that. <laughs> no, but, well, that's it, yes. I would be disappointed if you said anything else. I really do like you, Sarah. And I know why I like you. But are you sure that you are attracted to me? For the right reasons. What do you mean? St. Felix. Sweet dreams. I will deal with those tomorrow. So here, uh, I see your, your brother's regained the use of his legs, uh, and, and poor Christopher's practicing his marksmanship on passing priests, and you're asking me what I have to do with all that? I, Mr. Frost, stuck here in his padded cell? I wanted to approach the question openly. So, well, uh, I guess if I'd wanted to prove my powers, I, I couldn't have done better. Let me see. As far as Christopher's concerned, I agree, but my brother... No, no, no. Well, we've often seen good come from evil, and evil come from good. Uh, I move in mysterious ways. So, if I were to kill you, now what would that prove? That you believe in me. And that I'm stronger than passing time. Stronger than passing time. <laughs> Have you understood this yet? This devil idea is hopelessly out of date. It's, it's a faded image. This is a century that belongs to science. Knowledge has replaced faith. Babies are produced in laboratories, and superpowers have enough nuclear warheads to destroy the planet 30 times over. Rainforests are being destroyed, but football stars make the headlines, and tourists are murdered by five-year-olds while their brothers and sisters sell their bodies for crack. That's evil, Mr. Frost. That's your evil. It's done every day, it's taken for granted, and man is responsible. This devil is another facet of show business. You know, you remind me very much of a, of a washed up actor who, who's trying desperately to make a comeback and nobody gives a damn. No! God damn it! Why do you talk so much? I can tell you right now, I, I have no answer to any of that. 
because it takes more than words to understand me, and they don't get to me uh, because I know what they conceal. As a matter of fact, speech may well have been my greatest invention, so just shut up! Did you speak to Christopher? He's drawn to me like a bee is to honey. Sarah, Sarah. The price of action is colossal. And we are going to hell. I know. Simon? Don't tell me you've got in so near as well. Simon? What are you doing here? Who are you? you to dinner tomorrow night. What a nerve. That's all. Oh, um, except putting sainthood at risk. I leave you with a kiss. Sarah, it's Frank. We've got a big problem with Frost. I haven't said anything to Reinhardt, but you've got to come right away. It's very urgent. Come as quickly as you can. Oh! Ah! Where's she? She? If it's him you're talking about, I had to shoot him. There was nothing else to do. He was going for your throat. like a wolf. He's never attacked anyone before. Never even growled. Never even growled.
You don't usually rush over like that when I need you. Frank, what's the matter? Tell me what's wrong. Don't play shrink with me. This isn't a consultation. Let's have a quiet talk in my office, shall we? Come on. Stop talking to me like I was a patient! Why won't you see me? Why? Because I'm not a good fuck. That's it. That's it. But what if it was your fault? I'm sure that it was, Frank. Sniffing around you like some mongrel in heat. Get rid of him. For me. Wait here. Where are you going? Sarah! No. Damn. Damn! You win. I believe in everything I've seen. I believe in you. Oh, I don't know. I think uh, maybe you believe now because it's nighttime and what, you got scared? But I bet by tomorrow you're going to be yakking again. Just I wish not, but... Uh... Christopher come back, please. No, 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 no. There's only one way to stop the machinery and you know exactly... What I believe in you! I believe in you! Do you hear me? Isn't that what you wanted? You forgot? No, Sarah, get, get some sleep. You've had a hard night. Let's both get some sleep. <laughs> Sarah, you are under his spell. You're making it easy for him to destroy you. I know what I'm doing. All addicts say that. I'm not afraid of him. That's why he chose you. today this boy escaped from your world you are in part responsible 
Believe me, Inspector, I haven't the slightest idea where he's hiding. A priest? A rabbi? Why, Doctor? Why? If you're concealing anything that would allow me to stop this bloodbath, believe me, you'll pay for it. Don't you threaten me. Christopher Kovac is completely innocent. I, I... know, I know. An irresponsible youngster obeying an uncontrollable impulse, etc., etc. You can save all this for the trial. I'm neither the judge nor the jury. I know you haven't told me everything. If you change your mind, you know where to reach me. I've got to, to talk to you. I'm, I know what you're going to say, but I'm, I'm in a hurry. No, 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 no. I have no idea what happened last night. I'd had a, a little bit to drink and I lost my head. That never happens. Why don't you go home and get some rest? Mm -hmm. Where's Frost? Professor Reinhardt came to get him 15 minutes ago. They're in the game room. Reinhardt is putting him in with the others? Looks that way. And, uh... He also told me he wants him to eat in the dining room, like everybody else. I assume the White King is an allusion to my Dr. Smock. As for the Black Bishop, one hardly need comment on that, really. Don't you find the symbolism a bit obvious? Hmm? case. Oh, well, another spell's been cast. Hmm? Intense fear can sometimes produce that kind of bleeding. Even feeling, too. Why do you want to destroy me? We have everything to gain from understanding each other. Gone beyond my fascination and my revulsion and my fear. I want to know you. I want to understand you. Words. Those words. We start that stage. Soon, though. Soon you'll be on my side of the mirror. You underestimate me. I know you very well. Hello? St. 
Felix, that was practically a real kiss. What have you got in there? <laughs> there. No pedigree, father unknown, needs tender loving care. Perhaps you'd have preferred a box of chocolates or a bottle of wine. You just start dinner without me. I've got some work to do. He's very moved. How can you tell? He's always like that. The more we believe in his powers, the more powerful he will become. I was obsessed with him. It cost me two years of my life. But it's not a matter of believing or not believing. I've got to do something about him. Sarah, I was wrong. I was crazy. If we think he's the devil, then the devil he will be. Well, anyway, I'm off the case. Good. In a few days, your life will be in order. <sighs> Where do you fit in all this? waiting for you.
Well, you're a very lucky kid because one just became available. Usually, you got to make a reservation a year in advance. <laughs> nah, it's just a little joke. Okay. Don't touch that. I'll give you room number 14. It's really room number 13, but I call it 14 for the superstitious guys. Personally, I don't give a shit, but if it makes them feel better, hey, what the hell, huh? You know what I mean? It's the first floor on the left. Toilet works pretty good in 14. But the hot water is only hot between 8 and 9 in the morning. And we do not allow cooking in the room. You want to eat, you go to the restaurant across the street. Here. Go ahead. Hey, kid. You want a little welcome drink? Gotta be fizzy if you can get a frog, huh? forgiveness of no one, not of those whom I have disappointed, nor those I have failed to cure. I hardly think that many will attend my funeral. I have devoted years of vanity, self-denial and cowardice to arrive at this brilliant result. Bravo, Professor Reinhardt. Bravo. Rest in peace. Go up there, go on. He said he'd jump if anyone made a move. And I'm sure he would. It's no longer night, and I'm no longer afraid. I've come here to ask you to let Professor Reinhardt live. I don't know. I wouldn't give for some chives and half a lime. I guess I'll just have to make it do. Don't let him jump. Why not? He tried to keep us apart. Even if Christopher's arrested, there will always be another one, won't there? And more. This hospital's a gold mine for me. But uh, now you're going to fix it. It would be so simple if, if I, um, if I knew if I had... What, what, faith? Sarah.
Inspector Corelli. Hmm, you got here fast. Your partner told me you This better be something really important. Really important? What you call really important? That little motherfucker who's been using priests for clay pigeons? What do you think that sweetheart's worth? Hmm. Don't take it wrong. I don't give a shit about priests. He could go on plugging until doomsday. I just called because I wanted to help you out. You know. So? So? So room 14. Me, please. Would you do something for me? I'm listening. Tell her it wasn't me. I saw myself doing all those things in a nightmare. And I couldn't do anything to stop it. Not a thing. Tell her. Tell mother. You can tell her yourself. Get in. I'll come for you when you're finished. We can go wherever you like. I think about you a lot, you know. You're in my mind all the time. I'll see you tonight. someone is reason enough to get involved in in his problems and if I told you you were about to do something incredibly stupid would you pay any attention no of course not I'm not going to let anyone destroy I won my bet. I'll give you the money when you turn down that damn music in your room, huh? Come on. <laughs> Thanks. I've got the walking done. Now let's try sitting. months I'll be tap dancing and you look like you've just come back from a funeral I hardly thought it would make you sad I'm not sad I'm reassured
you're going to kill me because I'm the devil. Just like they once burned witches, uh, together we're obliterating centuries of civilization. Shut up. Dr. Sarah Day, a young psychiatrist at the end of the 20th century, one night entered the room of one of her patients and shot him in cold blood. You're handing me a stunning victory. You're already dead. No. You believed in me. And now I know that nothing and no one will ever resist me. I'm back, Sarah. I'm more powerful than all your knowledge, stronger than all your pretty phrases. I am strong. Well, we've reached the conclusion of Mr. Frost, and, you know, this is a truly lost gem in cinema. Mm -hmm. It's hard to believe that this is widely unavailable. Yeah. But, let's get to it. Mm -hmm. Now, do you think he was the devil? Absolutely. I do too. Yes, absolutely. And, you know... One of the things I love about this movie is it's very straightforward. Um, you don't have a lot of side stories. It's pretty much handed to us. Uh, Mr. Frost believes that he is the devil. Um, is he or is he just mad? Well, and a master manipulator. Right. Well, you know, I like Jeff Goldblum's portrayal of the devil. Mm -hmm. You know, he's charming, but he's also somewhat neurotic. 
He's yeah. unsure of himself. Yeah, he is. Um, yes, it's Jeff Goldblum playing the devil. Yes. Um, you know, with his little, you know, ticks and quirks and mannerisms. But to me, it works. It's like it was tailor-made for him. Yeah, I agree. But the question is, number one, you're a psychologist. You work in this sanitarium, this asylum. And here is your next um, client. Yeah. Patient. Case, whatever. Yes. Yeah. And he's like, you know, I'm the devil. You probably heard it 50 times. Right. She even says that. Right. Yeah. But this one's a little different. Well, you know, um, her brother gains the use of his legs. Yes. Which they said he never, he never would. You know, Christopher is drawn to him. Everybody else is drawn to him. You know, he yes. shows um, his little, his, his little miracles, like we said about, um, you know, the cheap jewelry and yes. the gold. Yes. And... You know, even the doctors there are kind of losing yeah. their minds. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the one doctor who had a brief fling with Dr. Sarah Day, mm -hmm. he, like, loses his mind. He's all drunk. Yeah. She busts that bowl of potpourri on his head. He's like... He's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, oh, that hurt, but it smelled great. Don't that smell good? <laughs> <laughs> but everybody's losing it. Yeah. Man, everybody's losing mm -hmm. it. You know, he's in the kitchen cooking up some sauce. Yeah. You eating that sauce? You know, probably not, but I bet you it's delicious. You'd pay for it. Oh, you pay for it be like, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I ain't been right in three days. Oh, that devil ziti got to me. <laughs> that devil ziti. Oh. <laughs> he had that lasagna in there. It was delicious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ooh, I'm going to church. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, you know, Alan Bates' his character, he spent time in church because oh, he truly yeah. believed that he oh, was yeah. the devil. Isn't that what you would do? It's what I would do. I would be in church. I'd probably be working there. <laughs> right. I'd probably quit. Yeah. Be like, you guys need a janitor? Right, sweeping up. Yeah. Right? I'd get the holy Never water. leave. Never leave. Yeah. Because once you encounter the devil, how's, how's your life ever going to be the same? It, could never be the same. But, you know, also saying, you know, um, I met the devil. That's like saying, I met Bigfoot. Or, right. You know, um, I met aliens. Yeah. Nobody nobody's believes gonna believe you. you. No, nobody's going to believe you. And, you know, what else is great about this is um, this is a scary movie. Yes. But there's not that much scare to it. It's there. The elements are there. It's suggested. He's the devil but there's nothing demonic about it. Right. And yet it still works. It, oh, it absolutely it does, does So I think they did a tremendous job with that. Yes. Yeah. Yes, because after this film is over, you'll watch it again. Mm -hmm. And you'll think about it. You'll think about the things that he says. Yeah. And... There's some great dialogue. There is great dialogue yeah. in this. And, you know, you will question your thoughts. Oh, oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. And if there is a downside to this movie, it's just in the quality of yes. the movie. Um, as far as we know, you know, there is no um, re-release of this. There's no HD version of this. Um, yeah, there are some DVDs floating around out there, but they are imports, like we said, and uh, if you can find them at all. Right. I mean, we've only ever seen this on VHS. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And what a shame. It is a shame. Yeah. It is a shame because did any of you out there see this film? Not yeah. many people have seen it. No. And there's not much information on it either. No. Yeah. No. And yeah. it's 1990. It's not yeah. like it's 1950. Exactly. It's a great film. And we were very, very pleased to be able to bring it back to you. Yeah, definitely. And we hope you enjoyed it as much as we do. Yeah, for sure. And we thank you for being here with us at Newcastle After Dark. We hope you join us again for Lost Treasure and Cinema. And until next time, good night.